So there's a interesting distinction that people that program Python might be interested in is def versus fn. So it's two different ways to define a function. Yep. And uh, fn is uh, a stricter version of def. Yep. What's the coolness that comes from the strictness? So here you get into what is the trade-off with the superset? <laughs> yes. Okay. So a superset, you have to, or you really want to be compatible. You've mm -hmm. Like if you're doing a superset, you've decided compatibility with existing code is the important thing, even if some of the decisions they made were maybe not what you'd choose. Yeah. Okay. So that means you put a lot of time into compatibility, and it means that you get locked into decisions of the past, even if they may not have been a good thing, right? Now, systems programmers typically like to control things, <laughs> right? And they, they want to make sure that, you know, not, not in all cases, of course, and, no, and even systems programmers are not one thing, right? But, but often you want predictability. And so one of, one of the things that Python has, for example, as you know, is that if you define a variable, you just say x equals 4. I have a variable named x. Now I say some long method, some some long name equals seventeen. Print out some long name. Oops, but I typoed it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, the compiler, the Python compiler, doesn't know in all cases what you're defining and what you're using. And did you typo the use of it or the definition? Mm -hmm. Right. And so, for people coming from type languages, again, I'm not saying they're right or wrong, but that drives them crazy because they want the compiler to tell them you typoed the name of this thing. Mm -hmm. Right, and so what FN does is it turns on, as you say, it's a strict mode, and so it says, okay, well, you have to actually declare intentionally declare your variables before you use them. That gives you more predictability, more uh, error checking, and things like this. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to uh, you don't have to use it. And this is a, a way that Mojo is both compatible because defs work the same way that defs have already mm -hmm. always worked, but it provides a new alternative that gives you more control and it allows certain kinds of people that have a different philosophy to be able to express that and get that. But usually, if you're writing Mojo code from scratch, you'll be using FN. It depends, again, it depends on your mentality, right? It's, it's, not, it's not that def is Python and FN is Mojo. Uh, Mojo has both and it loves both, right? It really depends on- FN is just strict. Yeah, exactly. Do you, are you are you playing around and scripting something out? And is it a one-off throwaway script? Cool. Like Python is great at that. I will still be using you, FN, but yeah. Well, so I, I love strictness. Okay. Well, so uh, control power. You, no. you also like suffering, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, how, go hand in hand. How many? How many pull-ups? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've lost count at this. Yeah, at, exactly. this, at this point. So, but, so and that's cool. I love you for that. Yeah. And some and I love other people but who if, like strict it, things, right? But but I don't want to say that that's the right thing because Python's also very beautiful for hacking around and doing stuff and research and these other cases where you may not want that. You see, I just feel like uh, maybe I'm wrong in that, but it feels like strictness leads to faster debugging. So in terms of going from even on a small project from zero to completion, it just. I guess it depends how many bugs you generate yeah. usually. Well, so I mean, if it's again lessons learned and looking at the ecosystem. It's really, I mean, I think it's if you study some of these languages over time, like the Ruby community, for example. Now, Ruby is a pretty well developed, pretty established community, but along their path, they really invested in unit testing. Like, so I think that the Ruby community has really pushed forward the state of the art of testing mm -hmm. because they didn't have a type system that caught a lot of bugs at compile time. Right. And so you can have the best of both worlds. You can have good testing and good types, right? And things like this. But but I thought that, that it was really interesting to see how certain challenges get solved. And in Python, for example, the interactive notebook kind of experiences and stuff like this are really amazing. And if you typo something, it doesn't matter. It just tells you it's fine. Right. And so I think that the trade offs are very different if you're building a um, you know, large scale production system versus you're building and exploring in a notebook and Speaking of control, the hilarious thing, if you look at code I write just for myself for fun, it's like littered with asserts everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a kind of... Well, yeah, you'd like types. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically saying yeah. uh, in a dictatorial way, this should be true now, otherwise everything stops. Well, and, you know? and, and the, the, that, that, that is the sign. And I, can't, I love you, man. But that is a yeah. sign of somebody who likes control. Yeah. And yeah. so, yes, I think that you'll like FN. I think, you, I think you'll like Mojo. <laughs> therapy session. Yes, I, I definitely will.